The sun's not worried about the winter Cause soon it will pass The light's not thinking about the darkness Or the shadow it casts A heart that's planted in forgiveness Doesn't dwell in the past So why should I be? Cause you take good care
Good morning, FCC. I'm Grace Stinnett. Um, I'm a senior graduating from Kingfisher High School. Um, my plans after high school is probably joining the Air Force. And my favorite FCC memory is probably playing volleyball at Ball State. Hi, my name is Hunter Kelly. This year I'm graduating from Northwest Claflin High School in the city. And um, my plans for next year are looking into going to a Rosetech um, for welding. And then my favorite memory from FCC is probably everyone uh, call me Rusty. That's all. Hey, everybody. My name is Maverick Reidenauer, and I will be graduating from Kingfisher High School. Next year I will be attending Linkier Prep which is a Christian prep school in Branch, Missouri, on the Camp Kamachuk campus. Um, my favorite memory from uh, FCC youth and just going to church in general is the food fight we had a few years ago behind the connection. Hi, my name is Ian Doherty. I will be graduating from Kingfisher High School. Next year, I plan on attending Oklahoma State University. I would like to say my favorite FCC memory is the dunk contest at Kids Camp. Hey everyone, my name is Matthew Stone. I go to Kingfisher High School. I'm attending the University of North Texas with major in sports broadcasting and playing basketball. And my favorite First Baptist Church memory was going to New York on a mission trip with my friends. Hello, First Baptist Church community. My name is Dylan Fisher, and I will be graduating from Mega High School this spring. I plan on attending Oklahoma State University this fall and majoring in agribusiness with a minor in pre-law. My favorite memory of First Baptist Church of Kingfisher would be attending Fall Street my sophomore year. It was so much fun, and I will never forget the memories made. Thank you. My name is Jarrett Bodwell. I'll be graduating from Kingfisher High School. Next year, I plan to attend Oklahoma State University and get a degree in ag business. And probably my favorite memories from FCC would be uh, just going to Fall Creek every year. It was a lot of fun. Hi, my name is Dan Fisher. I'm getting ready to graduate from Omega High School. Um, after... Um, after the next year, I'm planning on going to uh, MOC Konkawa to pr pursue a degree in animation. Uh, I'd say one of my favorite memories um, at um, First Baptist Kingfisher is probably um, getting baptized. Um, it's something I always look back to and thinking that was a new start in my life, and it's always it's always brought it's always made me smile thinking about it all the time. All right, let's have our seniors go ahead and come up here. Um, Senior Sunday is always a bittersweet thing for me. Um, I love these kids. I've spent a lot of time with this group, especially. Um, I got here in um, 2015, which they would have been seventh graders at that year, I believe. And so I've kind of gotten to walk with them all the way through um, student ministry. And you know, over the last few years, um, one of the things we've tried to focus on in our student ministry is discipleship and, and teaching students how to um, how to be a disciple maker. And it's been, it's been tough. It's been a fun challenge, but we decided we wanted to, to – oh, Grace, did you want to stand up so you can be taller? Look at that. She wanted to be a little taller. It's okay. You can do that. You can stand up here if you want to. It's fine. Um, but we, you know, we, we've looked at this, and we, we said we, we want to leave lasting memories, not just of, of the fun things, but we want to teach these students how when they leave um, Kingfisher, how when they leave the, the halls and the walls of this church – um, they go out into a community, they go out into wherever God calls them to, to be, and, and they can start a church if they need to start a church. They can start a Bible study. They, can, um, they know what, it's, what it means to be a disciple maker. Um, and so one of the things we wanted to do with, with Senior Sunday was we, we do want to congratulate them on, on their accomplishments. But before we let them go, we want to, to understand that as they leave here, we are sending out missionaries into our world um, and that's our that's our biggest goal in student ministries. We want to send out missionaries into our world. Um, and so as as we um, as we um, we're going to present them with the Bible. Patrick, do you want to do that? They um, we, we've got them a, a um, Christian Standard Bible that is a study Bible. Um, I'm not going to tell you that Patrick put anything in them, but he's always said, "Hey, I'd like to put like a hundred dollar bill somewhere, like in Lamentations, and see if they ever find it." Um, that way, we would know you've read your Bible. We're not going to tell you that he didn't do that, but nobody's found it yet, right? So, um, but we also, um, we, we want to, to, to spend just a few moments uh, of praying, um, a commissioning prayer over these students as we send them out from, from Kingfisher. So would you pray with me for these students? God, we thank you so much for who you are and what you've done in transforming the lives of these students. 
God, I pray that as as they they leave the nest, God, as they go into the world, God, I pray that you would you would put into their heart a passion to make disciples wherever they go. God, we pray that you would use uh, this group of, of of seniors right here God, to make an impact in the world for you. God, whatever they choose to do, God, whether whether they go into business, they go into ministry, whatever they choose to do, God, I pray that you would use them, God, to, to make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. God, we love them, and God, we want to pray for them. God, we want to pray for their protection. We want to pray for their, their growth and their knowledge and their wisdom as they grow. God, we, we pray that you would use them in incredible ways, God, to further your kingdom, to make a name for you. God, we thank you for all that you have done. And God, we ask that you would bless them, bless their families. And God, we pray that you would, again, just use them to make a huge impact in your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Congratulations, seniors. Amen. And what a beautiful thing today as we think about our seniors and their graduates as they move out in the real world and uh, they get to experience that. Welcome this morning to First Baptist Church. Glad you're with us. If you're online watching with us, thank you for joining us. Happy Mother's Day as well to our moms this morning. So glad you're here with us. Um, so glad, moms, that you're with us because without you, we wouldn't literally be here. So thank you so much for moms for all that you do. Moms and dads, uh, just appreciate you. And so mamas, we just love you and want you to know how much we love you today. Uh, one of the blessings we get to have is that, is that through the next few weeks, we're going to take up an offering. And this is the offering for the uh, Mother's Day offering. And this offering goes to, not yet. Um, <laughs> hey, you're good, but not just yet. Quick finger. That's right. But this offering goes to help uh, the Baptist Village communities as well as Baptist Homes for Children. Baptist Homes for Children is a, is a ministry here in Oklahoma that helps a lot of at-risk children have a safe place to be. It also helps with the Crisis Pregnancy Center. Uh, is what uh, Baptist Homes for Children does. Baptist uh, Village Communities is a, is a retirement place uh, for a lot of our senior adults who, and many of them, they struggle to get those things taken care of. And so the offering you're going to give uh, through the Baptist, uh, for the Mother's Day offering with the envelopes right here is an opportunity for you to help missions and ministry right here in Oklahoma with people from Oklahoma uh, to do ministry that really makes a lot of impacts in life. So please pray what God would have you give. Again, the offering envelopes are there in their pew. We appreciate that. If you have any prayer requests, anything going on in life, uh, we would love to, to know about that. Write those on the cards there in the pew. We do have the boxes in the corners of the room, the foyer and the gathering. You can put uh, these in there as well as your prayer requests. We appreciate that. All right? Let's pray this morning. Father God, we come to you today. Lord, we thank you again so much for these students, Lord, and the impacts that you, impact you want to make in their lives. Thank you for their families, Lord, for the impact and the investment they've made in them as well. And Lord, I do pray this morning as we uh, worship you through song, guys, we worship you through viewing this video about Mother's Day offering. Guys, we worship you through the reading and the understanding of your holy word. I pray that, God, you would just speak. I pray that, God, you'd give us ears to listen and hearts to respond. We love you, Jesus, and we ask these things in your name. Amen. Well, I'm 102. I'll be 103 in November. You know, after you get to be a certain age, you're kind of proud of it. <laughs> My name is Elma McGlone. I was raised on the farm. I belong to American Business Women. I work for Urban Renewal. I've had a great life. I've lived here for three years. It's such a nice place. You will certainly be happy here. You're never alone here. Our mission here at Baptist Village is serving God, serving you, serving together. We're in assisted living. Some of our residents just live here because they don't want the upkeep of their home anymore, but some of them do need a little additional care. Alma is the most fun-loving, up-for-anything kind of person that you could ever meet. It's just marvelous. You can walk out the door and there's somebody to talk to. They're always having things to do. We have car shows. We have shopping days. It is a hopping, fun place to be. 
when I first came, I had not thought much about the Bible. And then Ruth called me in. She said, all you have to do is pray and ask God to forgive you your sins. And that's what I did. And it was such a, I don't know how to describe it, my feeling after I prayed. The Adams Assistance Fund is able to help residents that may not have enough income to live at Baptist Village, but they want to live at Baptist Village. One of the great things about being an Oklahoma Baptist is that we all support each other, and this is one of the great ways that we're able to support each other. If it wasn't for the Adams Assistant Fund, I wouldn't be able to be here. And it is so appreciated. It is a blessing to be here. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And that again. of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and
this time we've had to come together. We've gotten to proclaim by your stripes we're healed. Through your death we have life. The power of sin is overcome. It is finished. God, it is done. So I pray each and every day that we would wake up and walk victorious knowing that we have the power to overcome. We have the hope, we have the peace that only comes from you. God, be with those here today. Be with those watching online. I pray your spirit would just rain down on them. God, that you would move in a mighty way. Be with Scott as he comes in and shares. God, be with him. God, prepare us to, to hear from the creator. And be with us now. In your name we pray. tell you, the cross of Christ, what an amazing, amazing picture of self-sacrifice, of giving up everything to have a relationship with us, and what a great God we serve. Amen, church? Amen. Take your Bibles, turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians this morning. Paul's first letter to the church of Thessalonica, chapter 3, 1 Thessalonians 3. You know, um, as we think about this today, and I begin to think about this, have you ever received a letter in the mail that you weren't expecting. Maybe you received a letter in the mail or you got a card uh, and it was something you didn't want to get. Maybe it was a letter from uh, that, that group with those three famous letters, I-R-S. Or you get the one that maybe it's a bill and you're thinking, I wasn't quite ready for that one. And you're thinking, how am I going to make this work? Or maybe you get the the, the, the letter that everybody loves to receive, it's the one that says, congratulations, you've been selected for jury duty. Anybody gotten that before? I, mean, I, I know I have, and actually I kind of got excited about that. I was kind of interested to, to serve on jury, jury duty and see how this thing, whole thing works. And Anyway, um, so uh, I, I've received that, but I've also received those letters, and you have hopefully too, where you get that card or that letter or that email or that text message or the instant message from somebody, and it just lifts your spirits. I mean, those times when maybe you were down a little bit and you were a little bit discouraged, and all of a sudden you received that word, that message, that letter, and it just does something for you. See, I look at the book of 1 Thessalonians, and so much of that is this encouragement. I mean, here are these people in Thessalonica, and we know they've been going through persecution because Paul specifies that. You can read the book of Acts, Chapter 17, you can see the Thessalonians going through this. And what's great about this church is this, this church in Thessalonica, these Thessalonians, have received this letter from the most popular uh, uh, Christ follower of all time. And they have in their hands, folks, a priceless jewel. By the way, if you're holding your Bible in your hand, which I encourage you to do every day, you have the same priceless jewel that the Thessalonians had 2,000 years ago. 
and the love and the encouragement we see in that. And so this morning as we continue this expository look at 1 Thessalonians, as we look through this, I want us to see how Paul is calling the Thessalonians to follow, what he says to them to help them understand how important it is to be in followership. And this last week I finished this book uh, by Jim Putman. Uh, Jim is the uh, pastor of a church in Post Falls, Idaho. Uh, it's titled Real, Real Life Discipleship. And one of the things Pastor Jim says in the book, is you'll see on the screen right here, he says that before we can lead, we must learn to follow. So before we can really lead in any aspect of life, we have to understand what it looks like to follow, what it looks like to follow Christ in our lives. And so I want you to look with me here in your copy of God's Word in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And we're going to read the entire chapter, okay, 13 verses. And I want you to look with me and we're going to jump into this and with both feet and see what God has for us this morning. Paul writes, therefore, when we can no longer stand it, we thought it was better off to be left alone in Athens, and we sent Timothy, our brother, and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you concerning your faith, so that no one will be shaken by these persecutions. For you yourselves know that we were appointed for this. Verse 4, in fact, when we were with you, we told you previously that we were going to suffer persecution as you know it happened. For this reason, when I could no longer stand it, I also sent him to find out about your faith, fearing the tempter, the devil, fearing the tempter had tempted you, and that our labor might be for nothing. But now Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news about your faith and love and reported that you always have good memories of us, wanting to see us as we also want to see you. Therefore, brothers... In all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about your faith. For now we live if you stand firm in the Lord. How can we thank God for you in return for all the joy we experienced before our God because of you? As we pray very earnestly, night and day, to see you face to face and to complete what's lacking in your faith. Verse 11, now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you. And may the Lord cause you to increase and overflow with love for one another and for everyone, just as we also do for you. May he make your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Amen. Mm. Let's pray this morning, church, okay? Lord God, we come to you today, and you are such a good, 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 great God that allows us to be here today, that we can proclaim hallelujah for the cross, seeing that picture of self-sacrifice that allows us to live because of the death of Christ. And because of his resurrection, God, we can have life with you everlasting. So God, I pray this morning, as we jump into this passage, God, I pray that you would speak and God, give your servants ears and hearts to respond to you in truth. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So I tell you, so over the last few weeks we've been looking at this, this letter of Paul. Uh, this first letter of Paul, the Thessalonians. And as we look at this, we looked at some areas of life in which we need to be following. So week one, we kind of laid some groundwork. All right? Kind of began to build the foundation of asking that first question. You can see this on the screen. The question is, who are you following? So in your life today, all of us are following somebody. We're following some sort of method or methodology, or we're following a person, or we're following something. So who is it that we're following, and, and, and what are the characteristics of those we want to follow? And we saw in the second week that we make sure we're following the example of Jesus. We follow Christ's example. He set the example for all of us in how we should live our lives. And as we live by the example of Christ, we saw in week three this, is that we follow through the trials of life. We follow the example of Christ through the trials of life that each and every one of us face. Because I believe this this morning, when you look at this passage, you begin to imagine the, the struggles that the Apostle Paul faced. I want you to pause me for a second and just think of the struggles that Paul went through in the midst of his journey with Jesus. Because remember, Paul, he was, again, he was a, he was, before he was converted to Christ, he was a Jewish leader. He was a Pharisee. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. He had all this stuff. He was part of the same group that crucified Christ. Paul's in that, that, that cohort of people. On top of that, 
We know that at the end of Acts 7, that Paul, who at that time was Saul, was standing there holding the coach for the guys who killed Stephen, the first Christian martyr. He was the guy holding the coach when they went and beat him with rocks and killed Stephen. He was standing there. And then Acts 8 verse 1 says this, that Paul agreed to the killing of Stephen. He said, yes, it needs to happen. That was in the midst of all that. And this is the same man who, in the midst of persecuting and killing Christians, all of a sudden, the light from heaven blasts him in the face. God speaks to him, and he does what? A complete 180. I mean, he's going this way and now going the complete opposite direction in his life. Radical change in his life. Which leads us to the thing I want us to grab hold of today. One big thing as we think about following is this. When you read through this letter, we see we need to be following by encouragement. That's the thing I want us to focus on this morning. One big thing is to follow. First of all, who we follow? We're following Christ's example. We're following through the trials. And we're following him in that through and by encouraging those around us. Because I want you to stop with me for a second. I want you to think about maybe the conversations that Paul had with his former compadres of the Pharisee people. Stop for a second and imagine the buddies that he grew up with, the teachings, all of his schoolmates he grew up with. And now here is Paul, and I can imagine the treatment that Paul had was incredibly, just by those people, incredibly harsh. Could, could, could you imagine this with me? The conversations were probably very belligerent. I mean, coming to Paul. If they ever saw him on the street, cornering him. Paul, what are you doing to us? Well, I'm going to call you Saul because that's what, how we grew up. Why are you doing this to us? Paul, Saul, you do remember that you were with us when we killed that Stephen guy, right? And, and, and the names that were probably called to Paul. Traitor. Phony. Hypocrite. All these things being thrown at Paul. In the midst of trying to live a completely different life because of the radical difference that Christ has made in him. And you come to this section here in 1 Thessalonians. And Paul talks about, again, in chapter 2, even into chapter 3, some of the persecutions that they're going to face. And I love what Paul does in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of all the things he was going through, in the midst of all the things that were being thrown at him. Paul uses this as an opportunity to encourage people. Again, we've, we've, we've kind of referenced this before. What would happen in life if when we went through persecution, we found a way to give praise to God as opposed to complain? What would happen in my life if I would find ways to praying for people who persecute me rather than complaining about them? Paul does the encouraging and the, and the, and the prayer. Look, look, look with me here at, at chapter 3, verse 1. He gives this myriad of ways he encourages. Look with me at verse 1. Therefore, when we could no longer stand it, we thought it was better to be left alone in Athens. Now, pause there for a second because I want you to remember the context here. Whenever In Acts 17, whenever Paul and his buddies, Luke and, 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 and probably Timothy and all those guys, when they left Thessalonica, they went on to Berea and then into Athens. And so Paul's like, it was probably best that we'd be left by ourselves in Athens. All right? So verse 2, and we sent Timothy, our brother, and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ. Look at this. To do what? To strengthen and to encourage you concerning your faith so that no one would be shaken by these persecutions. For you yourselves know that we were appointed for this. So how does Paul encourage? How does Paul follow the example of Christ through the trials? How does he encourage? Well, first of all, he sends his buddy Timothy. Here's Timothy, this young man who most likely was led to Christ by Paul, definitely discipled by Paul. You can imagine the, the discussions that Timothy and Paul probably had sitting down and Paul walking with him and talking with him and explaining the, the deep details of the Gospels, the deep details of the prophecies, all those things investing in Timothy's life. And you can read here that the Thessalonians were so important to Paul, these people were so important that he wanted to send them someone he knew would take care of them. He moves into verse 4. In fact, when we were with you, we told you previously you were going to suffer persecution. As you know, it happened. Again, we mentioned this. They were going to have persecution. Paul explains this, verse 5. For this reason, when we can no longer stand it. He's at the same wording there as in verse 1. We can no longer stand it. I sent him, Timothy, 
to find out about your faith, fearing that the tempter had tempted you and that our labor might be for nothing. So we look at this, and I love this about Paul, because what does he do? Paul sends the absolute best he's got. I've got this guy. His name is Timothy. Man, he is an amazing young man. And I'm going to send him to you because I want him to make sure that you are being encouraged, being strengthened, having in your faith what you need. Now, Paul didn't send some young whippersnapper. He didn't send, send some brand new believer, some guy who's still wet behind the ears. No, he sends a guy who he knew would sympathize with the people in their need. He sent a young man who he knew would encourage them. Again, back at verse 2, encouraged and strengthened them in the faith in the midst of all their persecution. See, church, if I could explain this to us in the best way we can maybe understand this, it's similar to the work that we do whenever we send and commission missionaries to go out. So here's one of the blessings in my life. Uh, One of the great blessings in my life is that in the last six years that I've had the blessing of being in Kingfisher, in the last six years, you as a church, hear me this morning, In the last six years, you as a church have sent out no less than 15 mission groups around the world, okay? Whether it was uh, to the RV parks or it was to areas of Oklahoma, New York, wherever it might be, or around the world, church, hear me. In the last six years, you as a church have sent out no less than 15 mission groups around the world. Now, hear me as well. That also includes the year 2000, pandemic year, where nobody could go anywhere. Fifteen groups in six years, including a pandemic year. And in the midst of all that, to still send an offering, Chris Hager, am I right? An offering to people who last year when we couldn't go church, you took up an offering to send to groups like Ecuador to help these people, to Russia, all these groups of people to minister to those needs. And so I look at this church and I begin to see how you and I are the encouragement that many people need to have in their lives. Much how Paul sent Timothy, we are sending people to do these works. But keep this in mind. Who else sent his very best to a people who completely needed it? God the Father. Pause for a second as we look at this. Again, we're talking about follow. We're following The example of Christ, we're following through trials. Here is God who had his very best, sent his son to a world that was completely in darkness. A son who lived a perfect, perfect, blameless life, who died a death on the cross that you and I deserved. God sent his very best. So in that, Paul, seeing the example of Jesus, sends the best he has in Timothy. And then in that, we follow by sending the best we have to those around us. So when Paul sends Timothy, we're sending missionaries. We're following that example. And I can promise you this this morning, church. Whenever you and I send missionaries, whenever we send mission dollars, hear me this morning, so many times, that's a huge. Chris Hager, can I ask you, how big was the encouragement to the people in Ecuador when that mission money came to them last year? Huge. Things they, didn't, they weren't going to be able to do if you didn't do that. Huge encouragement to people. Whenever we're able to send what God has given to us to send to those around us. Who are we following? We're following the example of Christ. We're following him through the trials. And in that, we're to be an encouragement to those around us. Because look again at verse 6. But now Timothy has come to us from you. Look at this. This is some great text. Don't miss this. And brought us good news about your faith and love and reported that you always have good memories of us. Wanting to see us. As we want to see, verse 7, look at this. Therefore, brothers, in all our distress and persecution, we were encouraged about, your, about you through your faith. And now we live if you stand firm in the Lord. Amazing, amazing. Do not miss this. Amazing. When you encourage someone in your faith, many times that encourages you. So in the past 20 years or so of of ministry and even going back several years before that and thinking of the opportunities that I've had to lead mission teams, whether in America or across the world, it never fails how many people who will go with me and they'll say, you know what, the one thing I really want to do is I want to find a way to encourage people in those places. 
And so we go to those places and we see people come to faith. We see, you know, a vacation Bible school or a backyard Bible club with kids. And, and we see all these different things happen. And it never fails, never fails. Then when I have people who will go on those trips with me and they'll come back and they'll say this. You know, I really thought that I would be the one to encourage, but I came back more encouraged than I got to encourage somebody else. Every time we go, people come back and say, I was encouraged when I thought that I was supposed to be the one to encourage. I think that's exactly what Paul's saying. His thought was this, I'm going to send my man Timothy, he's going to encourage you. But all of a sudden, Timothy came back, and guess what Timothy said? Hey, Paul, guess what? They're doing great. And Paul's like, that encourages me. I think, church, what we need to make sure we're doing in life is realize even though we may feel like we're supposed to be the encourager, remember that God desires to encourage your heart through other people as well. God desires to use other people. Timothy got back to Paul, and he was thinking, man, what a great group of people these are. So what does Paul do? He writes him a letter. He goes, Timothy encouraged. They encourage Timothy, comes back to him. What does Paul do? Sends a letter of encouragement. A letter to encourage them. These letters he continues to encourage. He continues to bolster their faith and their heart. So I want you to stop with me and think just for a minute about the times of life you felt discouraged. Maybe times of life you felt struggling. And again, you received something from somebody and it just totally turned things around for you. I'm not trying to steal her thunder this morning, but I got a great wife, by the way. Happy Mother's Day, Shell. I love you. And you need to hear her testimony at times because the times in life where she was basically living on whatever people would give her financially, and a bill would come in, and God, I need you to meet this need. Go in the post office, go in the mailbox, and there being a check in the mail for exactly what she needed. Now, church, let me ask you a question. How does that happen? It happens because Jesus is all sufficient. He knows our needs. And he wants to use you to find a way to encourage somebody else. He wants to use you to give someone that encouragement they need. This is exactly what Paul's letter did for the Thessalonian people. It was this encouragement that they needed to persevere through the trials, the persecution that they're facing. Now, let's, let's flip this just for a second. And I want you to think about this with me for a minute. Because I can imagine that there's all of us have had those days where we felt down, we felt dejected, things weren't quite going our way, and you didn't receive an encouragement from somebody. Those days, but you just, I, I'm going through a rough patch and there's not somebody who's calling me. First of all, let me just say this two things. Number one, let me say this. I'm sorry that you felt that way. I'm sorry that you went through that circumstance of life. And I'm sorry that you weren't reached, someone didn't reach out to you. But secondly, let me say this. How many times have you had a great day that you could have said someone to something and you didn't? The moments in life when God was truly just filling you with the Spirit. You were having a great day. Things were going so well. All of a sudden, you received an extra encouragement. Maybe you got a bonus check, and all of a sudden, things were going great. But you didn't find an opportunity to encourage someone to do what needed to be done. So hear me today, church, when I say this. Don't be surprised if we're not encouraged. We're not, don't be surprised when we're not encouraged whenever we're not an encourager. I remember growing up as a kid. If there was a birthday party you wanted to go to, you know what you did? You invited that kid to your birthday party. Because you knew that was going to be a good one. Whether how good or how bad yours was going to be, you're hoping he's going to invite you. Hear me this morning. I'm not trying to manipulate the system. What I am saying is this. When we have the opportunity to encourage somebody, we need to make sure we're doing that. That we're reaching out the love of Christ to someone. Because I think we all know this. We all go through different circumstances in life, and we got to find those opportunities. Because look with me at verse 9. Paul writes, How can we thank God for you in return for all the joy we've experienced before the Lord because of you? Hear the, the encouragement they've given Paul. 
as we pray very earnestly night and day to see you face to face and complete what's lacking in your faith. How is Paul encouraging them? He's, he's praying for them. He's lifting them up in prayer earnestly night and day to see you face to face to complete what's lacking in your faith. Verse 12, and may the Lord cause you to increase and overflow. I love that picture. Overflow with love for one another and make everyone just as uh, and, and for everyone, just as we also do for you, may we make, may he make your hearts blameless in holiness before our Lord and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Amen. So Paul found a way to send somebody to them. Paul found a way to write an encouraging word as they were encouraging him. But lastly, church, Paul prayed for him. Paul lifted up a prayer that they would be strong, holy, blameless. Paul understood the importance of prayer and how God uses our prayers. So let me ask you this this morning as we kind of begin to put all this together here. Who are you praying for today? Just pause for a second and ask yourself the question, who has the Lord placed on your heart to pray for? So we look at this, we might say, well, I don't know of anybody who needs encouragement today. Well, first of all, you probably do. Um, second of all, if you honestly say, I don't know of anybody who needs prayer right now for encouragement, you know who you might ask? Is to ask the Lord who in your heart, who in your life needs encouragement. God, who in my life today do I just need to send an encouraging word to? God, who in my life today do you know that needs to have a little bit of strengthening by the things that I can say to them. So I'm afraid one of the things that we have in our society today, and I think this is across the board no matter where you are, I think we're so stinking busy that we just miss things. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not saying this to sound mean. I think that, and this is me, I think we get so self-absorbed with all the things that we have that it's so easy to miss people around us who need encouragement and prayer. So here's what I'm asking you to do this morning. I'm asking you if you would, ask the Lord today, who in my life really needs an encouraging word? Who in my life today, God, t please share, God, tell me today, who in my life really needs an encouragement? Pastor, I don't know that they need encouragement today. Well, it's okay because God knows. Write a letter. Send him a message. Hey, just want you to know, God put you on my heart. Just want you to know I'm praying for you. You know, we have a lot of folks in the last year, of course, with the pandemic and such, who have gone through a really rough time. Find opportunities to encourage someone. When you see someone go through a, a positive thing, encourage someone. Lift them up before the Lord. Or maybe you have a friend that you don't need to know needs encouragement, but God knows it. God works in that way. So this morning as we um, have Mother's Day, this morning as we think about Graduate Sunday, Senior Sunday, I want to share one more verse with you that I think is incredibly important in the midst of all this. And I love how the Apostle John writes in 3 John. It's the only chapter, verse 4. John says this, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. No greater joy. Mamas, can I ask you a question? Is there anything greater that you can imagine for your kids than to know that they're walking with Jesus? Daddies, is there anything greater, any greater joy you can have in your life than to know that your kids are walking with Jesus? Now hear me this morning when I say this. That type of thing right there, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of prayer. Sometimes it may take a lot of sleepless nights. God, I pray that my children will walk in the truth. I pray that as I encourage my own family, that my children, wives, can I ask you to pray for your husbands that they would walk in the truth? Husbands, pray for your wives that they will walk in truth. No greater joy for the parent of a graduate or for a mama to look at her kids and to say, my kids are walking in truth. It takes encouragement. It takes a lot of work. 
But you know what? We've got a God who gives us what's necessary to live out these things in life. Will we trust him? I'm asking if you would to bow with me this morning. And this morning as we bow, this morning as we think about the blessing of who Jesus is, as we think about the love that Christ has displayed for us on that cross, I'm asking you this morning, are you living a life of encouragement? Are you living a life that is building others up? Even in the midst of what may not look like a struggle, may not look like persecution, are you living a life that is helping those around you? Are there those days where it's harder, more difficult, a more tough decision to encourage someone than others? Absolutely. Many times the days get very difficult. I can, I can imagine the Apostle Paul going through the persecution he was facing. Paul going through situations of life, wondering how he was going to make it through other than the grace of Christ that was on his life. And I can imagine right now there's some of us here today thinking, how am I going to get through? Let me tell you this morning, church, the best thing you can do in the midst of persecution, the best thing you can do in the midst of struggles is to give God praise and encourage those around you. Find a way. It might be this morning you've never trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're struggling in your own life. And this morning, he wants to give you everything that's necessary to live a life of encouragement. And it starts by trusting in Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you've never trusted in Christ this morning, you've never trusted in the, the, the death on his cross, the resurrection from the grave, this morning we'd love to sit down with you and show you in God's word what it means to know Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning. Maybe God's just calling you to make an altar here at the steps in front of the stage and say, God, help me be an encouragement. Help me to find ways to be an encourager of those around me. As I follow your example, as I walk through trials, help me to find ways to be an encourager in the midst of all this. Whatever God's calling you to do this morning, I'm asking if you would just trust him. And I ask you this morning, that what will we do with Jesus today? Lord Jesus, we come here this morning. Thank you so much for the truth that we find in your word. Lord, knowing that your word is what's necessary and needed for life. I pray, God, as we go in this response time this morning, that, God, you would speak. God, give us hearts to respond to you today. We love you, Jesus. And we ask these things in your awesome name. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together this morning. If God's calling you to respond to him today, I'm asking if you would, you come. if you would just sit bow with me this morning for a little bit here today. And the reason why, the reason why Paul writes this, the Thessalonians church is this. God has never called any of you to live the Christian life by yourself. If the reason why he called you to live the Christian life by yourself, if that was why, then he would have taken you to heaven after you if, if, if that's not what God wanted, he would have taken you to heaven, boom, right away. But he left you here because he wants your life to be an encouragement to those around you. This morning with heads bowed today, you might say, Pastor, I really need some encouragement. I need, I, I, I need a, a strengthening of God's Holy Spirit. This morning, if that's you, nobody looking around, if that's you, just raise your hand real quick and back down so I can pray for you. I'm not going to walk back to you. Thank you. I'm not going to walk back to you and embarrass you. If you need some encouragement this morning, just, just let me know here today. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Come on. 
Thank you. Thank you. Let me ask you this morning, if you know somebody who needs encouragement today, somebody you know that they need a, a, a little strengthening, a little boosting of the Holy Spirit, I'm asking if you would, just right where you are, just pray for them right now by name. Lift their name up before God this morning. Say, God, please be with this person. Give them strength. Give them encouragement. Speak to their heart. I'm asking us to remain in an attitude of prayer with heads bowed this morning. I'm asking Doug to sing one more verse over us this morning. As Doug sings this morning, if God's calling you to respond to him today, you come. this way this morning. I just want to let you know this this morning, church, that throughout this week, if there are times in life that you just need somebody to encourage you and somebody to pray for you, please let me know, all right? Uh, I won't be able to sit down with you either in the office or on the phone or however that looks, and I just want to be able to help you as we walk through this life. Friends, here's the thing. We all go through trials, and they're all different, so I just want to encourage you to hang in there, all right, and know that we've got uh, the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, but we also have one another to encourage us and, and, and lead us as we go through this life, all right? A couple things I want to make sure that you're aware of before you head out this morning. A couple things I want to make sure that you know today is continue to pray for the discipleship pastor search team. Of course, see the names here uh, with Jay, Greg, Leah, Mark, Carl, Chad, and Jeff. Continue to pray for this group as we go through the next several weeks and just praying for what God has for us. I know they appreciate that. Offering boxes are in the corners of the room, the back, the foyer, and the gathering. So again, uh, for the Mother's Day offering, if you have that, you want to drop that in there. If you have a prayer request card, drop that in there as well. We appreciate that. Tomorrow night is Compassion Clinic over in the Connection, so please remember that. Uh, 5.30, if you can come out and help us, we sure appreciate that. Always a great ministry. Next Sunday, we do have our business meeting at 6 o'clock right here, uh, beginning at 6 o'clock in, in the sanctuary. So please remember that. We've got some really good stuff happening. We'll make sure that you're aware of those things, so keep that in mind. And then also, again, don't forget Mother's Day offering. Those envelopes are there in the pew in front of you. If you don't have one of those, let me know. We'll get you one of those envelopes, and we can make sure that you're taken care of in that. All right? Is there anything else? I think that's the last one. Is that right, Cheyenne? Very cool. All right. Church, here's a great thing. You get to leave this place, and you get to go find people to encourage. So as you go get a donut, get some coffee, find somebody in the gathering to encourage. As you go to Sunday school, find somebody to encourage. As you go throughout your day, find somebody at a restaurant, work, where it might be. Encourage somebody in the name of Jesus, all right? We're going to sing the, the chorus to your name, Doug. Is that cool with you, man? All right, let's sing it out. Guys, lead us today. God bless you. Have a great day.
This is the guy. Not the boy. This is the guy.